All right. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Good? Maybe? Everybody awake? Maybe? I don't know. Welcome to Friday at Martinsville. Okay, to kick off our media availabilities today, we have been joined by Timothy Peters, driver of the number 23 autos by Nelson.com Chevrolet. And Timothy, congratulations on your win um, recently, but then also welcome home. We'll yeah. talk a little bit about coming back to Martinsville, but coming back the most recent winner in the King Pearl Truck Series. Yeah, it's pretty cool um, being able to go to Talladega a couple weeks ago and um, in our Kingman Chevrolet with GMS and all the guys from GMS Fabrication and Chevrolet. Uh, Jerry Baxter and the 25 team and and to get in victory lane uh, was just a sweet feeling for me our, our last win for me came in 2015 at Phoenix so uh, the c competition is so tough you never know when the next one's going to come and it was just so exciting to to get back and and to enjoy that moment and let it all soak in and uh, what I thought was going to be my, my last ride with GMS um, you know, of the three races that I was really lucky to get to drive, it <clears throat> turned into another opportunity that, um, you know, GMS Racing and GMS Fabrication and Chevrolet, Barry Nelson and, and his fine folks <coughs> at autosbynelson.com, Maury Gallagher, Mike Bean, Ron Booth, and Spencer Gallagher, and, and just everyone within just uh, for another chance to come home and, and try to do it one more time. All right. We'll take questions for Timothy. If you have one, raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll start here to our right. Anybody? Do you need okay. Give us one second. Here, go ahead and take this one and I'll take it. Who has questions? Yep. Oh uh, yeah, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcast and WAKG. You know, Timothy you talked about what it meant to get that win. Um, how has it changed your perspective? How has it um, motivated you? Uh, obviously, you are a competitive individual, but that win had to do something. <laughs> it did a lot. It, uh, it, not that I lost confidence, you know, but it rejuvenated it. Um, you know, racing is a humbling sport, and, you know, the person that can take the good and the bad, you know, I feel like helps you, you know, if you can cope with that and you don't let it really – let it play too many mind games with you it makes you better going forward um and when you're able to go to victory lane it kind of just takes that takes that out you know and it restores that confidence so and then especially uh, for the track record uh, since the inception of gms racing and the championship with with johnny and uh and how they have ran across the board you know winning races uh, week in and week out um, to, to come here uh, where I feel confident in my abilities, you know, and I've had a lot of success being able to get my first win here. You know, it just uh, it's just icing on the cake. All right, Chris, go ahead. Chris and I catch fence.com. Timothy, is there any opportunity for this fifth GMS team to run, run out the rest of the year? Um, you know, I, I would sure like to say I hope so. You know, I'm enjoying uh, the moment right now, uh, but not that I know of, but um, you know, hopefully the, the win helped. But uh, I'm very thankful for the chances that I'm getting. Jim Mutter, motorsport.com. Along those same lines, what has been your approach to racing? Um, to race when you can? I mean, would you like to have an opportunity to run trucks or something else full time again? Do you keep your options open? Absolutely. Um, 38 years old, and it's like I said earlier on the interview. Um, after Talladega, I feel like I'm 18, you know. Uh, the fire still burns deep in me uh, to win and, and to want to be competitive. Um, when, when Mike gave me a call and, and everybody gave me that chance to go to Canada, uh, you know, I knew that that was a shot to execute. And it just, we went there and seeing the truck and we were fast from the time that we got in. And that's a compliment to those guys, to Jerry Baxter and, and, and everyone within the company for building fast trucks and, and, you know, I felt like that I've always been decent at road course, but it just, it helped me um, uh, understand going left and right from a good vehicle to be competitive. So w when I got home after that weekend and we finished fourth, I, I was talking to my wife. It's like, you know, it's, I'm like a kid again because um, you're in competitive equipment. You know, you have a shot to win and that's a feeling that uh, I hadn't had in a while. So I hope that it could turn into something because I want to be in this series. I, I love truck racing, you know. I, I want to win races and, and have a shot at a championship. Along those lines, um, you and 
guys have a lot of experience in this series. What's your take on the GMS organization as a whole? Uh, a commitment. You know, uh, it starts from from Maury and and the and the people that uh, Mike Beam has assembled, uh, the people that coincide together. Uh, you know, it just gels, and, and it's, it's a lot of racers. And um, you know, it's 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 there's it's cut and dry. You know, um, and when you have that commitment and you have the racers and they they assemble the the competitive trucks like they do week in and week out, it just you know. I, I think that seven or eight races this year, the organization has won, and that's that's huge, you know. And counting an Xfinity win too, so um, it's it's just a it's just a good feeling to be a part of such a a powerhouse. Okay, go ahead. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Uh, Timothy, a couple for you. First, uh, obviously, you've had success here in several different facets, not just in the truck, but uh, in a late model as well. And with the support that Barry Nelson has brought to this fifth truck this weekend, what does it mean to have him back in this? And what does it take to be successful here at Martinsville? Uh, to be successful, I feel like it's, it's patience, you know. Um, I, I, I put Martinsville and Super Speedway Racing kind of together. It's, it's a type deal to where uh, you have to know the situation that you're in. Uh, to know when to be aggressive and know when not to be. And when it gets down to the laps winding down, you know, you, you need to find yourself towards the front to try to execute on that great finish, and hopefully that great finish is a win. Uh, you know, Barry is, has been a great supporter of mine uh, and my family, and, and obviously his family has been as well uh, since 2010 um, for what he has done with our late model stock car team since the inception, and we've won um, – a lot of races and been in uh, this year, next weekend in a closeout deal. We're in a championship hunt with Bobby McCarty, and hopefully we can finish out the year well with Brandon Pierce. So um, you don't find guys much like that um, that are all in. You know, same situation I'm in now. You know, Maury and these guys are, are all in, and Barry's all in, and um, you know they want to win. So uh, you know, I'm very thankful that Barry came on board this weekend and. and and help uh, in many parts of the puzzle uh, that came together to come here and to try to get a win. You've got a couple of clocks, one truck clock. What would it mean to get another one this weekend? And if this is the last start of the year to end it on that kind of a high? Well, it, it's it's funny because I get that question a lot. Well, see, I have two late model clocks, right? But I have the cup for when I won in 2009. But that's okay because I joined a club that day, and that's the winning club, you know. So um, I want that clock really bad. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is <clears throat> you know, I'm a family guy. I love my wife. I love my kids. Um, you know, with my son being five and my little girl three, they don't get to travel with me as much. And this is this is home, home court for me. So I always want to do good here. And, uh, you know, nothing would be any special – any more special than to be able to get a win and to take a picture. So that's the goal. Additional questions? Dustin Albino, front stretch. Timothy, you mentioned how you want to be back full time, but after making the championship four a couple of years ago, how, how was it weighed on you mentally? Um, how challenging has it been the last two years? Uh, you know, it's uh, again, it's a tight deal to where you're always going to have uh, personal questions, you know, uh, but Again, when you're able to, to get back in and and to have success and, and know that you can still do it. Like I said, the fire still burns deep into me, and, and I hope that, uh, you know, an opportunity will present itself, you know. Um, you know, I know that I can be competitive, uh, and obviously we can win races and execute. So, um, you know, since uh, since the 2016 championship run and, and then obviously with the uh, Red Horse shutting down in 2017, I've always stayed in with Barry Nelson and, and looking after the late model stock car team and, and continue to run that program uh, with two full-time guys and fill in spots uh, and race when I could. And we were able to win the Valley Star Credit Union 300 last year here, so which was big for us because our team is based here in Martinsville and obviously Barry uh, being based with his dealerships in this area. So uh, staying busy with racing just – not not being out of it, you know. All right, Chris, go ahead. Timothy, when your career is done in, in the in the truck series or in NASCAR in as a whole, do you see yourself being an advocate in coming back and working in the sport the way whether it's a truck series um, expert or working with young drivers or spotter or any of those types of roles? 
Yeah, that would be nice. Um, obviously, uh, that day is going to come one day. Hopefully, hopefully it's later. You know, hopefully not sooner. Um, you know, uh, I'm, if you took me out of the element, I'm like a fish out of water. You know, I know nothing else. Um, you know, I understand uh, the concept of everything. I know how to, to communicate and, and listen to how maybe the younger guys. Uh, I can maybe help the under guy, uh, the younger guys communicate um, their vehicles. You know, um, I just love the sport. Um, you know, it goes back to that 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 talk that my father and I had when I was racing a little bit of go karts at Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and and doing pretty decent uh, in baseball. And he said, "You just need to pick." And so I picked racing, and uh, that's all I've ever known. All right, Jim, go ahead. Uh, I just. Quick follow up: um, Was it more bittersweet when you get pushed to the side, not because uh, you were running poorly or anything? I think you were fifth in points when when the team shut down, but because of circumstances that were not under your control. Well, um, you know, uh, Tom had to make a decision that really a lot of owners probably don't like to make. You know, and, and I respect that a hundred percent. I had. Uh, uh, nine, ten year run there, and that's more than probably what most folks can say. Um, and, and I'm still friends with Tom, so you know, it's just, um, I understand, and uh, again, we're still really great friends to today. All right, additional questions this morning for Timothy? I feel like it's like really early, but it's really not. I know, right? I think the rain and the um, cloudiness make us think that. So, any final questions for Timothy this morning? All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. All right. We're going to continue here this morning with um, some additional media availabilities. We've now been joined by Justin Haley, driver of the number 24 Fraternal Order of Eagles Chevrolet, and Johnny Sauter, driver of the number 21 ISM Connect Chevrolet. And welcome to both of you to Martinsville. Um, so we will go ahead and take questions for Justin or Johnny. If you have one, please raise your hand. State your name and affiliation. We'll start in the back. Jacob Zillman, Speed Sport. Uh, one for each of you, kind of along the same lines. Johnny, uh, you've been here a bunch, so kind of like what I asked Timothy earlier, what does it take from a driving standpoint to be successful here? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, it ta obviously, it takes a lot of things. Um, you know, this is a, ch a place, obviously, where turning in the center of the corner is a, is a, is a must-have. Um, but obviously there's things that go along with that um, that affect how your stuff turns in the middle of the corner. Obviously you got to have enough forward drive to get off the corner, um, not be loose into the corner. So it's, it's a place that takes a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of uh, what's the word I'm looking for, I guess, where you, you uh, compromise a little bit. Uh, so you got to give up a little bit to be good where you want to be and, and so forth. So, um, and then obviously racing the racetrack is another thing. And then racing the competition on a racetrack where people like to beat and bang. So, um, you know, it seems like in the old days we used to have kind of off sequence pit stops where you would find yourself with tires. Um, so let's say you qualified up front and then you find yourself 15th, 20th, and, and then have to, you know, try to charge back up through there on fresh tires and, and so on. Now with the stages, your pit strategy is pretty much dictated for you. So it kind of takes that out of the equation a little bit. <laughs> so I feel like it's made the race in a little bit easier, but um, this is just a place where, you know, you can get caught up in somebody else's mess. And obviously restarts are really crucial, not getting stuck on the outside. So um, you, know, you have to be a little bit lucky to, to be successful here. So uh, I've been on both sides of the coin here. We've been fortunate enough to win. We've been, you know, I've been wadded up. So it's just a, a tough place where I feel like even though it's only 200 laps, a lot of things have to go right in that 200 lap window to, to have a successful day here. All right, Justin, you won the opening race of the last round. Can you do it again this weekend? And you're, you, you cut your teeth on short tracks too much like Johnny did. Uh, do you feel like anything from any of the other short tracks you've driven can apply here? Uh, can we do it? Yes. Um, there's about a 1 in 30, 32 chance, I, I believe. Um, I've never been really the best at Martinsville. I can't tell you why. Um, you know, I'm not not the best short track racer, even though I, I grew up doing it. Um, I've taken to road courses quite a bit. So um, I was trying to, you know, think about how I felt going into Canada, uh, the first race of the round of eight, because 
obviously there's a lot more pressure now it's the first round or first race of the round of six and i just felt a lot more comfortable at canada um than i than i do here just because um that's kind of my background and you know it's you know kind of the card i like to play so um martin so you got to be pretty lucky um i've never had any type of success here i think i've got one top 10 and like five starts so that's not the best i've never even qualified in the top 10 here um and i like i said i, I don't know why i struggle um can't can't tell you i feel like i've probably picked johnny's brain quite a bit but um yeah i, I don't know I've, ne I've never been really the best here so chances of us winning uh aren't as great as they were in canada i'll tell you that much um just because of where i lack not the truck you know the truck's always been good this is the truck that chase won uh at martinsville in two three races ago so um lacking a lot of driver here um be the first to admit it so i i, I don't know um it, it's it's a tough place I've, I've always been you know uh 2016 i was running third with with three to go got wrecked um i think the spring race i was running fourth fifth um got caught on the outside of restart and ended up 10th so it's not like we've you know ran terrible here we always run good we just can't finish it so um well We'll see. I'll, I'll let you know uh, how I feel about it at the end of the weekend. All right. Additional questions? Okay. Take one more. Dustin Albino, front stretch. Uh, for you, Justin, you enter the, this round with 10 consecutive top 10s, two wins. Do you feel like you're one of the favorites for the title? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, I don't know. I... I came in as the underdog and I'll, I'll let I'll let you know why I don't feel like I'm probably the favorite to most fans is is we haven't got that many stage points um we don't have any stage wins and and every time the points reset that puts us at a deficit um going into the round of eight we were sitting seventh um you know a few points out and, and we were second in points until the uh points reset and then we got put back to fifth now four out so um, I feel like, you know, with our two wins, that's gotten us, you know, quite a few um, playoff points, but I don't think we have enough to to be one of the favorites. So I feel like this guy sitting next to me is probably one of the championship favorites. Um, but, you know, hopefully we run good. If we run like we did uh, in the round of eight, I, I think um, we will. I mean, we finished first, third, and fourth. Um, that's an average finish of 2.6. So I'm not very good at math, but someone told me that. So let me know if I'm wrong. But if we if we keep that up and we run like that in the round of six, uh, I don't see why not. All right, Chris, did you have a question? Yeah, Chris, my catch dot com. Johnny, uh, with the rain today, would you be okay with scrapping practice and just qualifying race? Well, be better show. I don't know. I mean, I you know, obviously there's a lot of rookies here, so I'd like to see them get some track time uh, practice wise. Uh, you know, but I know they had a meeting. I guess I wasn't there. I was sitting out in my rental car. But uh, um, something. I guess we're going to qualify tomorrow because there's 35 trucks here. Is that what you said, Justin? So um, sounds like we're just going to qualify and then go cold turkey into the race. So um, I don't know if a guy will maybe spend a little bit of that practice or that qualifying session, maybe making a five lap practice run, and then because here obviously it's enough time to turn it around pretty quick. So we'll see. But. Um, or maybe qualify right away and then, you know, switch it over to a practice run maybe for a couple laps or something like that. But um, the tough part is just guys that have never been here before. Uh, you know, I'd like to see them get some time. But obviously you can't control the weather. So, um, you know, that's just part of racing. But I think nowadays with simulators and all that other stuff that people do, um, it gives them a definite step in the right direction as far as going to a racetrack they've never been to before. So, um so I think it's just what it is. You know, if it's raining, it's raining there. It's not much you can do about it. All right. Additional questions? Okay. We'll go back. Johnny, you going back to Pensacola for the Derby? <laughs> I'm, I'm toying with it. So Timothy was just showing me the picture of his new car that he's taking down there. So um, when I see people that I know that are going down there, it, it tempts me to want to go. Obviously, Stuart Friesen's going. Um, but – it's tough deal. So, um, a lot of work is involved with all that and it, it takes a lot of resources to do it. And, and I got a guy that wants to buy my car and I'm trying to build a new one right now. So I, I don't know yet. Um, I don't know how my wife will feel about me leaving for another <laughs> five, six days, but we'll see what happens. You've done a lot more super late model racing or been able to fit in a lot more this year than I feel like maybe the past couple of years. Do you feel like that's helped you keep your skill set sharp? 
Yeah, I mean, it's fun um, for sure. Obviously, the way I do it, I build the cars myself and load them up and I drive them to the racetrack myself. And, and uh, then when I get there, I got some buddies to come and help me out. So um, I enjoy fabricating. I enjoy building stuff. Uh, it's something that I've always done. And when I came up racing, you built your own race car and you went to the racetrack and you did it all that away. So um, you can tell I've been hanging around with Hamke that, uh, that away. So, um, you know, I, it's just I love it, you know, like. Last night I was at GMS all day yesterday, and then I go to Hamkeys or whoever's and just hang out and talk short track racing. So um, I do think it helps. So, I mean, racing is racing. I don't care if it's a quarter mile or a two and a half mile racetrack. It's, it's a lot of the fundamentals still apply. So I don't think it hurts for sure. I, I think it's something that keeps you thinking racing and, and you know, that kind of stuff. And, and that kind of mindset's a good thing to have. All right. Additional questions? All right. Best of luck this weekend. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thanks. All right. Continuing here this morning, almost afternoon, I should say, um, with uh, two additional drivers, we've been joined by Ben Rhodes and Grant Infinger. Um, I know that Matt Crafton was also scheduled to be here, a part of this panel. He is um, unable to make it this morning. But if you have any questions for him, let us know. We'll get you hooked up with the proper people um, to connect with him. But both Ben and Grant are here to take your questions. Um, if you have any, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. Who would like to kick us off? Come on, going once, going twice. We'll start with Jacob. Jacob Zillman, Speed Sport. Um, ben, this race, obviously, I know we talked about it last year. This race carries some significance when Alpha's on the sponsorship, but it carries significance for you because you're still in the running for an owner's title. So how do you balance all of that with the grittiness of what it takes to win here and, and knowing that there are so many things that could go wrong when you're trying to chase a clock? Yeah, I've kind of um, thrown the balance out the window now. Caution to the wind is, boom, gone. I have uh, I figure that all these chase guys have a lot more to lose than I do, and, uh, you know, there are certain guys that are in the in the playoffs that um, we've had exchanges with throughout the season. So, you know, if, if they're in my way, they better watch out because I'm going for the wins now. And, you know, I think the owner's points will take care of itself. I just need to focus on our, our team. And, uh, again, caution, caution to the wind. I don't, I don't care at this point. I'm, you know, I'm going out here to get the best finishes for my team and we're not worried about stage points or anything like, like before. So I guess at this point, the, the turn would be the gloves are off. You know, we don't, we're there's nothing holding us back. And um, we're here to have fun, but at the same time, you know, if there's certain individuals that could be in my way, um, I'll do it in true Martinsville fashion. Is it motivating for you, even though you're out of the driver's picture, to still try and get a championship for this team? It is. It's very motivating. I know for, for my, my crew members, probably more so than even myself, um, Eddie Tracona, all of our guys are on our, are on our team, and even back at the race shop, the owner's championship means just as much to them as it does the driver's championship. And it does to me because I want to make Duke and Rhonda happy. You know, that's the one that, that I've been told they really, really, really want to get and they haven't had yet. So if I was able to do that for them, that would be amazing. You know, I, I, I want to make them happy. They've done a lot for me. Uh, but even the guys back at the shop, you know, that's something that they really take a lot of pride in. So I'm going to do my best I can to get them that championship. But at the same time, we're, I'm, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the season for everything it's worth. All right, additional questions? Okay, we'll start with Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. Grant, I'm having won in the last round and had, had, having a relatively stress-free race at Talladega, if Talladega can ever be stress-free. Um, do you have to change gears now again and get back into the playoff mode? Um, a little bit. I mean, kind of, uh, I guess Talladega was kind of the anomaly for us or whatever. We've, uh, we've kind of had the same mindset all year, all year long, uh, to be aggressive, but also be smart. Uh, we, we still need stage points. Um, everything we can get, every position matters. So, um, that's the mindset again this weekend. Um, I guess I need to stay away from Ben. I hope, I hope me and him are good. Oh, he, he no, seems we're a more, violent you're my week. teammate, <laughs> bud. I'm not talking about teammates here. We're talking about uh, other people. No, nah, I, I just he just him. offered me some dry socks <laughs> and shoes. That's a real teammate. Um, but no, I mean our our mindset is the same, and and obviously it was a it was a huge load off to to get that win. 
and, and to, to automatically advance through the last round, but but now everything's the same. So it will be it will be really nice to uh, to do that again. You know, this weekend, um, and I feel like we we've got a truck that can do it. Um, we've had really good uh, four performance F one fifties the the last couple of months here. It seems like we've we've really elevated. Um, so I think we can do it, but but we also got to stay smart and. Um, there, there seems to be uh, mass casualties here too, so we got to stay out of that that department. All right, yes, go ahead. Grant, uh, how big was the win for your team and for you last round? Because I feel like with with the six that we've got now in this round, there, it was kind of a maybe three way scramble looking at it from the outside for this last spot. Did, do you feel like that win maybe gives you a little bit of a leg up as far as chasing a spot in the final four at Homestead? Um, I mean, from a from strictly points wise and stuff like that, I, I, the, obviously the the points help. The, those extra playoff points help for sure. Um, but I think more so from from a confidence level for for uh, myself, Jeff Hensley, all of our guys. I think that gave us a a, a little bit of a confidence booster. And um, I, I feel like it, as a whole, we've been progressing the the right direction all year long, and we've made steady improvements uh, from the beginning of the year. And feel like we're kind of in the opportunity to, to be peaking where we need to and um, I definitely feel good about the three races in this round and um, definitely feel good about our chances to, to make it to Homestead. All right additional questions? Okay. Dustin Albino, front stretch. Uh, Grant, out of the three races in this round, which one worries you the most? Um, I'd say from a performance standpoint, I feel really good about each of those three, about being able to, to show up and have really fast um, trucks at, at any of those. Um, they, they've, you know, I, I don't think that's a problem. I think I think here is the, the, the place you got to worry about the most as far as attrition, um, brakes, you know, fenders flying off after you hit somebody or a uh, hole in the radiator or whatever here, um, you know, there, there's definitely a, a bigger chance for, for something bad to happen as far as that goes, being in Martinsville. Um, but but as far as from a performance standpoint and, and uh, how our team has competed, I feel really good about each of these races in this round. All right. Additional questions? Chris? Yeah, Chris Knight, CatchFest.com. Ben, when you say the gloves are off, does that mean for drivers in the playoffs? I'm not saying all drivers in the playoffs. Um, you know, that'd I'm just be, saying there's – That'd be Johnny Sauter. It could possibly be him. Um, but I will say that even just the mindset that coming into this race, I don't really have anything to lose at this point. You know, I'm, I'm certainly just keeping my mindset focused towards the owner's championship. But, um, you know, I, I don't have anything to lose at this point. I'm going for the win. And if that means that i got to do it in Martinsville fashion or i got to use my fenders up, I don't have a problem with that. And uh, somebody else might have a problem at the end of the race, but I don't. All right. Harrison, do you have a question? Do you feel like the track Yeah, that's another good question. I, um, I know we were all really upset after that race, and I know that my team really still is. And they talk about it, talk about it, talk about it all season long. And it would be just nice to get that for those guys because – it was such a letdown for them and even for myself, but you know, I look more at the team and, and how they're doing and to see how big they were let down and how much it mattered to them. Um, I would love to just kind of get that redemption for them and just finish it off. Right. Um, but yeah, it kind of feels that way, you know, you know, in a certain sense and even races past, I feel like we've been really good at this track, but our performances have been strong, but our finishes are just awful. So, I just want to have a good race, solid pit stops, no mistakes. And um, if we could just lead again like we did last time, that was the nicest race I've had here. You know, the truck was clean until, I don't know, like 70 laps to go uh, until we had those bad pit stops. So if we can do that again, that would be perfect. All right. Additional questions? All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, we're going to kick off another round of panel media, media availabilities here in advance of this weekend's Game World Truck Series race at Martinsville Speedway. And we've now been joined by Noah Gragson, driver of the number 18 Safe Light Auto Glass Toyota, and Brett Moffitt, driver of the number 16 AWNC Azingorp Group Toyota, I should say. So we will kick off 
questions for Brett or Noah, if you have one, just please raise your hand, say your name and affiliation, and we'll start with Jacob in the back. Jacob's going to speak sport. How's the hot dog, Noah? It's good. <laughs> my second one. <laughs> You're already on your second one today? Yeah. Um, I'm impressed. The first one was mustard and slaw. Have you had one yet? No. <laughs> you I say yet because you got to get one more here, <laughs> you know. Um, I've never had one today. <laughs> well, here, I got a little bit left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got slaw and mustard on the first one, and then I don't like chili, but I got chili on the second <laughs> one. It's not bad. It's got a little beef jerky taste to it, so it's it's kind of good. You may be the only person I've ever heard compared chili to beef jerky, but I'll digress and go to the real question. You want, you've won this race. You have a clock. You did it on a late restart. What's it going to take to replicate that success, do this again? I mean, c can you really rely on past success at Martinsville with the way they beat and bang? No, I feel like this racetrack itself is different every time you come here. Um, you can come with the same setup for 10 years and you're going to run differently every single time. Just uh, just the way the track takes rubber. Um, I feel like the weather and the temperature outside plays a big part in that. So um, I don't know. I'm coming back with a different setup than what we had in the springtime here. So not getting any practice. You can't really lean on past success here. So um, just been trying to work hard with my crew chief, Rudy Fugel. He uh, and I sat down. We had ice cream couple of days ago um, for about an hour and um, just talked about this weekend what we needed to do about this round in the playoffs and then Martinsville and then uh, j yeah just come here with a different setup um, it's gonna be challenging so hopefully we can get it dialed in in three rounds of practice and then go race Brett you uh, scraped your way into this round I know Talladega did not at all go how you were hoping it would go but is this reset what you guys needed? Does this let you guys as a team have a fresh perspective and a fresh shot at hopefully making it to Homestead? Yeah, for sure. Um, we ran decent here in the spring. Um, and I mean, this round in general is just um, three better racetracks for us. I think for most of the field, you know, the um, the road course in Talladega all in one round had everyone nervous and everyone aggressive at Vegas. And um, I think you know, everyone's going to be a little bit smarter here and, and we can go back to our past success this season and, and try to rely on that to get through to Homestead and hopefully fight for a championship. All right. Additional questions? Go ahead. Dustin, I'll be on front stretch. For both of you guys, uh, which track were you, were you used the most in this round? I'd say uh, here. Yeah. I'd say either here or Texas. Um, just... Texas, it's pretty hard to pass. Um, very slinky type mile and a half racing where you can run up onto a guy and be four tenths faster than him and then get stalled out. So um, track position is really key there and then anything can happen here. Um, but pretty excited about here and Phoenix. I feel like those are my best two. All right, we'll go Reed and then Chris. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire for both of you. Um, with the track flipped at Phoenix and, and the restart zone now and what used to be turn two, is that going to present a different set of challenges? I think so. Um, I think going off in a old turn three, new turn one um, on the first, I don't know, probably the whole race, um, I think those cup guys are going to be watching that to learn, but we're going in there cold turkey. You know, we don't, we don't know how far you can drive it in on a restart and, you might have some restarts like the Roval uh, getting into new turn one. So just not knowing how far you can drive it in. But um, that's where I think uh, working with TRD, um, Toyota Racing Development, on the simulator side is going to help tremendously. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, three and f or the old turn three and four, I'll refer to it as. Um, it's really hard to go side by side into there just because the trucks are so aero dependent and even in the cars they are. So um, being too wide for 10 15 rows on a restart it's probably gonna be a little bit hairy and at the same side of that the old turn one and two is more of a dive bomb knocks them out of the way corner so um if you're coming to a checkered i i would guess that's gonna happen because it's a tighter corner and you can really get to someone's bumper there so i'd say it's gonna create a little bit of drama all right additional questions okay chris uh chris night catch fence.com but there was a recent change that may not be beneficial to your team at homestead miami 
next month if you guys do make it to the championship four do you guys feel like it's something that you can overcome yeah we've been really proud or we are really proud of everything we've done this year with toyota and, and the oem engine and mark conquest and um you know right now we're just going to continue to do our thing it's it's been working for us and um you know it's we've had the the engine deal has been a moving target all year and we reevaluate after every race but as of right now you know we're going to stick with what's been working all right additional questions okay take up brett in a season where you guys have overcome so many challenges chased down sponsorship just scratched and clawed to get to the point you're at right now what would it mean to you guys to get through this round and even just to have a shot at winning the championship at homestead um it would be huge for us uh you know shiggy's built such a great race team and um you know i was blessed with the opportunity to drive for him this year and i think everyone on our team is very deserving of the opportunity to fight for a championship and they they put in the work and they deserve it and um you know, I feel like Homestead would be a good racetrack for us, and to to maybe be able to deliver a championship to Shiggy would be an honor, um, and it just it would be rewarding for everybody on the race team. All right, additional questions. You got one more? Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, I saw some fans outside. It's crazy. There's fans already out here um in the pouring rain that's just how much they love martinsville but um i was thinking i'm like man it's, it's gonna be cool to come back next year and then i was thinking i'm like oh wait i'm not but i don't know hopefully uh i can run a truck race here i don't know don't chris don't put that down as noah's running a truck race it's not <laughs> the thing it might be on nascar heat three it might i don't know but um i think that'd be cool you know all right, any final questions? Okay, Chris and then Jim. Noah, uh, Halloween's next week. So I was just wondering if you got any crazy parties you're going to and what you would care to dress up as if you went to one. Um, I don't go to any parties and I don't um, do any of that stuff. I'm on a very strict schedule trying to win this championship. But after, maybe. And I'm not dressing up as anything yet. Unless you want to go to a little Halloween soiree. I don't know. What should I be, Chris? What are you going to be? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Uh, JimHunterMotorsport.com. Noah, being in the uh, playoffs this year, if you were able to replicate your win of a year ago here what would that do you think uh how would that position you uh having a couple races to get ready for homestead that that'd be huge um not saying that we wouldn't have to worry about texas or phoenix but we'd be able to work a lot more on our homestead um truck and uh and kind of have those cards laid out in our favor um i feel like and could put a little bit more time and effort into uh into homestead just as a whole so um definitely try and go and race those guys in texas and phoenix but uh maybe take bolder chances if that was the case but right now it's it's not the case and we don't we're not even going to practice here so we might be 30th we might be first there in qualifying i, I don't know um how it's going to be so just need to uh to work hard and, and focus on this weekend and if that does end up happening then uh then that'll be great and um but right now i just gotta wait in the rain eat some hot dogs and uh hopefully go racing tomorrow all right go ahead uh yeah barry richmond wakg piedmont broadcasting corporation uh i'm throwing this out to both of you i know i heard heard it said that when you come back to martinsville uh, it's different every time, but how much are breaks still a factor for you guys? How much do you really have to conserve compared to years past? Um, it, for us in the truck series, it's really not a problem. As long as the crew chief leaves enough of the grill opening open, you're you're really not fighting the brake issue much. Uh, on a long run, you can get them a little bit hot, and if you just take it easy for a couple laps, they normally come back right away. So uh, in 200 laps, it shouldn't really be an issue. 
knock on wood, but I've never had um, a brake overheating issue um, here, and hopefully we don't have that come tomorrow's race. But I feel like in the truck series, you're not really running out of brake pedal um, as much as you might get them hotter and they all get the tire hotter but i don't really feel like you can run out of brakes in the truck series so um i think with 200 laps 250 laps that we run in the spring you can't really go through brakes like you would maybe in a 500 lap race like in the cup car so um it's pretty much just balls to the wall in the truck series and uh you might run into a little damage with guys wrecking in front of you and that could create brake heat but um it's normal um temperatures as you're going. Okay. Check it. Brett, just to follow up from what Chris asked a couple minutes ago, can you speak to the rules change that he referenced and how it affects you guys? Um, not really. <laughs> I don't really know. I haven't re I've been paying attention to Martinsville. I know this week, um, you know, we, we were already, already prepared for Martinsville here and, and it doesn't affect us at all. So we got to just go to our thing and, and worry about our Toyota Tundra and make sure it's driving good and the few laps we'll get in qualifying and uh, go for a race win. So um, it is what it is, and we'll move forward. I have a question for Brett. Do you get more or less ladies with the stash? Uh, yeah, it's, like I feel like when you're talking, I'm hurting. looking at you it's right there hurting. on the wall. Dale Earnhardt, you know, that looks exactly like you with the stash. Depends if they're from Mooresville, USA or not. <laughs> All right. Any final questions before we let Noah and Brett go? I don't want to make Brett look bad. Um, his stash would look like a child. Yeah, I, c I could grow. I could br grow like a broomstick or a broom on my upper lip. But, yeah, I could grow a mean stash. I just don't want to make him look bad, you know. All right. Thanks for joining us today. You guys have a best of luck this weekend. All right. We have added an addition, or I should say additional panel here. Um, this morning with the rain um, outside, um, Todd, Harrison, and Christian were willing to come um, visit with us, so we are going to welcome that opportunity for you guys to have some additional content. Um, so we have been joined by, as I just said, Harrison Burton, driver of the number 51 Morton Buildings Toyota, Todd Gillen, driver of the number 4 JBL Sirius XM Toyota, and Christian Eckes, driver of the number 46 Craftsman Toyota, all for Kyle Busch Motorsports. So we'll open up for questions. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. Who would like to kick us off? Come on, somebody wants to kick us off. All right, Chris. Chris Mike Hedgefest.com. Christian, that was a good week for you announcing full uh, ARCA schedule in 2019. But where does that land you with your trucks plans for next year? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure yet, um, but I'm really looking forward to uh, getting back in the ARC Racing Series next year. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to make more truck starts like this, and, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to having a good race at Martinsville this weekend. You know, yeah, it's not the greatest with the rain right now, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, get some track time tomorrow and uh, have a good weekend. All right, continue with questions. Okay, Jacob. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport, and I'm now hidden by a camera, I guess, so we'll just roll with this. For all three of you, who is going to end up doing the craziest thing this weekend? I know we just put all three of you up there, and that's crazy enough, but who, who who's going to get into the most trouble this weekend? Todd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Todd. <laughs> why, why do they always assume it's you, Todd? I don't know on that one, but <laughs> I, maybe they expect me to do more dumb stuff in the race, but... Um, <laughs> we're just here to win, man. I don't know. But uh, with all this rain, we're going to have a lot of extra downtime. Might get in some trouble at a go-kart track or something. So yeah, there you <laughs> go. we'll see. In, in all seriousness, for, for any or all of you, you guys have come up the ladder together. How much fun is it to all be on the same team, all be racing for the same goal, but be able to, to bounce notes off each other and, and kind of share in the experience as well? 
Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We we all work together really well, like you said. And um, I mean, me and Christian road tripped up here together. It's always it's cool. Yeah, he's pumped up about it. Uh, it's cool, man. You know, we we get to have our, our really good friends work alongside us. You know, Noah's on our team as well, and that's that's a ton of fun, obviously. So uh, we all are goofy and have a lot of fun. And uh, but when it comes time to go to work, we we get down to work and uh, we'll do anything to win. And and that's kind of what's fun is. Everyone says that you can't have friends at the racetrack, but we all have, you know, we're all really close. But then when it comes down to racing, I'll uh, be the first one to say that we all want to beat each other more than almost anyone else. So uh, we have a lot of fun, but we're also super competitive. So it's a great balance for sure. All right. Additional questions? Chris? Barry? It's Todd, um, has it bothered you that you haven't won yet this year? And how do you plan to uh, conquer that before the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. Um I felt like we were going to be a little bit stronger than we have been so far. Um, I really didn't expect it to be such a hard transition, but um, I feel like we've been gaining on it every week since the beginning of the year. And um, I feel like we've got competitive speed, top five speed. Now it's just about getting that little bit extra. And um, as far as KBM wise, I feel like everyone's working harder than ever um, in the race shop and um, preparing the best trucks possible for these last four races. Um, we were really strong here in the, the springtime probably one of our best races and um and i think with extra experience i've got uh with my team and everything i think uh i think we'll be just as good tomorrow and um to finish out the season we've got some really strong uh racetracks coming up for us i think i think it could possibly come um this season but um it's one of those things i feel like once you start putting more pressure on yourself it's um you know nothing good happens so uh it's just about letting it come to us and um you know really just being patient with every race all right, Barry. Uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcasting, WAKG. This question is for Harrison. I'm trying to do this by memory, so that's always dangerous. But uh, our last conversation, uh, I think you had a birthday this month. And so we talked about now this opens the door for you to be able to go to more tracks. So talk a little bit about that and, of course, coming to Martinsville as the home track. Well, um, you know, it's it's cool to, to finally turn 18, and now I can kind of – uh, finish the year off strong. I'm running all the last four races with KVM. I'll be here, um, Texas, Phoenix, and Homestead. So we got some big tracks. I just ran my first mile and a half last weekend at, at Kansas in the ARCA car and, and wound up second. So um, the doors are opening up. It's now it's just time for uh, for me to take advantage of those opportunities and, and go out and, and get wins on the big tracks. You know, um, we uh, we had a good first start at, at Kansas with second, but I'm hungry for, for wins. And so um, first, got to think about Martinsville and, and focus on that because I feel like we have a, a chance to win here as well. Um, but, yeah, it would be really, really cool to, to win on a, on a big track early for sure. All right. Noah, do you have a question? <laughs> Hi, uh, Noah with NoahGregson.com. Um, which one of you three is going to finish behind the number 18 truck tomorrow in the second place position? Well, if I'm coming in the last corner, better watch out. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. oh, he's like ten four. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. Payback. <laughs> no, do you have any follow up questions? <coughs> All right. Any additional questions? All right, Jacob. For Christian, yeah. getting a chance to to get back here. At Martinsville, uh, you had a lot of success on short tracks in the ARCA series this year. Can you translate that to this weekend in the truck? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Um, you know, like I said, it definitely, uh, you know, sucks not getting track time today. Um, but, you know, I've been here in a late model and stuff like that, so hopefully that can translate. Sure, it was a couple of years ago, but, uh, you know, short tracks, short tracks. So, you know, hopefully I can uh, learn it through qualifying, get a decent starting spot, and, you uh, but I think it's 200 laps tomorrow, so it should uh, should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Any final questions? All right. Well, best of luck this weekend. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you.